Welcome back to the T. Uh, lately, our generator has acted up during some of our storms. This video documents how we went about diagnosing the problem. I thought it was a gas supply problem because I'd had it before, but that wasn't it. Stay tuned. So it's been, believe it or not, two years since I had to work on this 22KW Generac. The last time I worked on this, I changed the oil and serviced it, but really what happened was it would not stay running. And there's an internal regulator inside this cabinet down below here that was replaced by a service technician because I could not find one online. So now what's happening is when this generator gets under load, specifically our hot water heater, it'll start hunting. never get to a steady state and it almost sounds like it's gonna die so I'm gonna put a my gauge and I got a gauge for this and a gauge over on the propane tank and we'll see if the regulators are not supplying enough gas or if these are not oscillating then it's probably gonna be that internal regulator again so it looks about like I left it I, really haven't uh, worked on this since then. Um, it says inspect battery. I'll have to take a look at that. I don't know if you can see it. So we'll look at the battery, but first I'm going to check the gas pressure and uh, get camera girl to turn the water heater on in there and see what happens. You'll definitely be able to hear it on the video. This regulator, I heard it talking the other day when it was under load. This is a 3 16 Allen I'm using here. This is a, a 0 to 30. It's a little bit too much for what I'm trying to do, but I think this is going to run for between 5 and 10 pounds. So we'll stick this one in here. That way I can run back and forth and see, see how they're performing. So that's... 13 pounds without any load on it. This is my yellow jacket gas pressure test kit. I used to carry this in my service truck when I ran air conditioning calls. So we'll use that here. Because this is, while that's pounds over there, this is going to be ounces. Or maybe it's 10 to 15 inches of water column. All right, 15, 17 inches of water column. Right there, unloaded. So now all we gotta do is crank it up and check to see if these fluctuate. So we're gonna simulate a power failure to test so we can observe our gauges. I think all we have to do is right here where it says utility service disconnect, throw it. I heard it talk a little bit. Error code 1600. There's no electricity in the house. Do you know what happened? Yep. 
Well, I don't know what why it happened, but it's it, it latched a 1600 code and it's saying under speed. So I'm gonna have to go back to the office, pull up the data on this generator and our water heater and take a look at things. But one thing I do know is that gauge, while it did come down, it come down to maybe, I don't know, 17, 16 inches of water column. It didn't fluctuate. I mean, that's plenty. I think that's more than what the manufacturer recommends. So I'm going to go to the office, do a little calculation, see what's going on. Okay, so the investigation is this water, this generator is not quiet. It's about 80% of what it needs to be as far as the water heater goes, and the wattage. So what I'm going to do is, this is what we're going to do as a workaround. The size of the generator is not going to change. Our load's not going to change. So these two breakers right here are going to that water heater, that Sysco water heater. So during a power failure, if we have a big load going on in the house, we'll just throw one of these. We'll still have hot water. It just won't be at this the water rate won't be at the same rate. You'll have to run the water slower. I'll check these for leaks real quick. It's always good to check for leaks when you're doing something with propane or natural gas. Probably just need to um, service the battery, you know, put it on charger for a while. What's it say? One, two. There's nothing wrong with that battery. 12.94. Of course, it's been running. It might have been below 12 before we started it. I should have checked it before we started. So, what I'm going to do is I'll have to come back and check that when it hasn't been running. This is the transfer switch here. Uh, I'll give you a little pin here. And you can't see it with this panel on, but it goes in that hole right there. And you can manually trip this if you want to. So one time I did come out here and the power had failed and this did not trip. So I just stuck the pin in there, this pin, and pulled it down and had no problems. So I hope y'all enjoyed the video and have a blessed week. All we found out was our water heater is more than this generator can handle. And I guess I'll have to come back and check the battery because there's nothing wrong with it right now, but it's been running. So it just may be a service. That might have been a service indication just to come check it. But that battery is two years old, so it should be good. Thank y'all.